off with uh, Colet for a content standards update. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see your smiling faces or some sort of facsimile of, of your faces online here. Um, I just wanted to uh, share my screen here real quickly. Um, uh, have a brief update for you on our um, <clears throat> teacher learning hub in, um, a, as well as the content standards update. So I'm just going to move a couple things around here on the screen so hopefully you can see a little bit better. Okay. Um, so as I reported to you last month um, and provided a little bit of an update uh, in in supporting teachers and, and school leaders uh, across the state, we've um, really seen a huge uptick in the engagement with the Teacher Learning Hub. Um, and what, when, when we looked at our information at the end of April, um, just after the last meeting that I um, spent some time with you on this, there were 5,076 renewal units earned in April alone. Um, and so that that um, really has uh, we, we've noticed a difference in in engagement and workload on the part of our team here at the OPI who support all of the courses that teachers and, and leaders are taking. So we're excited to be able to continue uh, that engagement and um, are really paying attention to um, what are some of the courses that we need to develop to help meet some of the the gaps that we see and the questions that we have coming about supporting online pedagogy in particular um, for, for K-12 students. So just wanted to give you that little bit of a data update from the Teacher Learning Hub. Um, we've continued to also on a weekly basis support some remote learning sharing sessions. Um, and the, definitely that engagement has declined over the last couple of weeks. Um, but again, our principal sharing session is is consistently um, the group that has the highest number of participants, and that that group is continuing to meet on Wednesdays at 2 p.m. And and anyone and all are welcome to share and and um, be part of those sessions as well. Um, there are meeting notes and a lot of information about those sessions that are linked here in the on the online learning resources webpage. Um, and you'll have this document um, after the meeting concludes so that you can click on the links and, and go see more about uh, what's going on with the hub and the sharing sessions. Um, but the other item, just very briefly, wanted to give an update to the group with the content standards revision uh, process underway. Uh, we did uh, visit with the Board of Public Education um, and the board approved a slightly updated adoption timeline for this year. Uh, and that includes um, providing information on economic impact to the education interim committee at their September meeting, which would be the last meeting before the last regular meeting before the legislative session starts um, and an adoption of rules at the November meeting. Originally on our schedule, this adoption would have happened in September, um, but again, due to uh, our friend COVID-19 um, and the shift in responsibilities and duties over the last two months, um, we wanted to get more input on the economic impact analyses, as well as um, we just need a little bit more cushion of time to prepare the final documents for um, transmittal to the Board of Public Education in July. Um, along with that, we still do have surveys that are available for um, responses. And again, you'll have this document after the conclusion of this meeting, but you can always go to the K-12 content standards webpage to uh, look at draft serve um, or look at drafts of the the standards and respond to the economic impact surveys. We provided a handy dandy worksheet to download ahead of time, um, and we did actually shorten the surveys um, significantly, um, just to focus in on some specific information that we'd like to add into those economic impact reports. So with that, um, I thank you very much for your time and would entertain any questions that you might have for me.
Thanks, Colet. No problem. Rockstar, thank you, Colet. Um, jumping into the task forces, we have finalized the information on those this week um, and notified uh, task force participants yesterday um, who were selected to serve on them. Um, as I said last week, we have two task forces, one called Montana Learn 2020 and one called Montana Flex 2020. Um, Cole and I are heading up the Montana Learn 2020 task force, which is um, primarily um, students, parents, teachers. Um, we do have a few community members, um, such as um, the After School Alliance. Um, we have the Great Falls Teachers Union. Um, we've got a couple of legislators, a couple of county health officials. So it's going to be a good diverse committee, but primarily focused on, on parents, students, and teachers and what supports they need. Um, so that first work session with the Montana Learn Group is this Thursday. Uh, we'll have four meetings between this month and the middle of June. And then the Montana Flex uh, 2020 task force is being headed up by Julie Mergel and uh, Cheryl Allen. And uh, many of you are on that task force. It's primarily school administrators, um, the Board of Public Ed, education associations, um, and you'll be looking at administrative rules and statutes and what kind of flexibility schools need. Um, so I will share around, I'll have Christy share around after this meeting, um, the document that lists everyone who is on those committees and the meeting dates. Um, we'll be posting all of the Zoom recordings on our website. Um, and of course, welcoming public comment on them and, and comment from your organizations. So yeah, basically these two committees will be run, running concurrently, but looking at different issues, um, looking at flexibilities with one, and then looking at um, supports and resources and what kind of learning environments um, teachers, students, and parents would like to see in the coming fall semester. So like I said, we'll get that information shared around in the reflections. Um, are there any questions or anything I forgot to add, Superintendent? Uh, number one, this is all about safety and uh, making sure that everything that occurs in our schools is a reflection of why we're here at this point in this different normal. Uh, we don't know what is going to happen in the fall. Uh, we don't know when, what phase we might be in. Uh, we don't know a lot of things, so that uncertainty we are placing under, um, under the umbrella of safety. So Kirk, yeah, to answer your questions, um, last week when I briefly discussed the task forces, they were still being outlined and formed. Um, so we have a, a more clear picture this week of the work they'll be doing. The School Safety Advisory Committee is still gonna be the lead on any health and safety issues as it relates to school. So yeah, the, the Montana Learn um, Committee is going to be looking at reentry. Um, and I'm sure that since we have a, a couple of county health officials on, there will be discussion of, um, of health and safety, but it's more gonna be around um, distance learning needs um, and what the experiences were this semester, what teachers, parents, and students need. Um, we're still gonna be deferring to the School Safety Advisory Committee for, um, for any health and safety reentry guidance. Um, any other questions or comments on that? So Dylan, yeah, this is Kirk, and I just would do follow up with that. You know, the four planks that are in that, um, the work of this uh, Safe Schools Advisory Committee, academic programming and social, emotional and behavioral are two of the four planks that are there. So, you know, what, what the task force is looking at uh, in terms of academic programming and distance delivery and that under the three, you know, potentially three phases, I think will be important information to have to the safe Montana Safe Schools Advisory Committee so that the final, that final guidance could be put together hopefully by the end of June. Yes. Absolutely, that's our goal. Um, and yeah, the, all of the guidance from both task forces will be given to the School Safety Advisory Committee. Um, and we wouldn't expect the School Safety Advisory Committee to hit on all of the different um, implicate or you know facets that go into school reentry, um, things like distance learning um, resources, um, IT resources. 
Um, but they'll get that whole document so that they can look at what some of the concerns and recommendations are with regards specifically to health and safety environments for learning. <laughs> Anything else on that? So Julia, go ahead. It's Julia's up next. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Julia Swingley. I'm the chief counsel here. I haven't been on Zoom from the superintendent's desk, so I've returned from my social distancing office, and I'm back. Nice to see you guys. Uh, I guess I'm just here to report to you that since the last ed education advocates meeting when I indicated that we were working on an administrative rule uh, amendment to uh, to take care of a problem that we have with uh, funding funding and reimbursements for traffic education uh, because of a, the, a July 10th deadline um, I'm here to tell you that I did in fact work with Tracy Mosman and we uh, have filed today the notice of, um, of amendment of administrative rule 10.13.309, which relates to the reimbursement for public school districts uh, for traffic education. Uh, you, if, if your organization is on the list of interested persons, you will receive a notice according to the rules uh, for the, under the MAPA process, uh, you will get a uh, a notice of this rule and a copy of this notice that we filed today. If you are not on that list of interested persons and you wish to receive notice of uh, this rulemaking action and any future rulemaking actions, please uh, do notify me and um, I will get you on that list. Um, the, the comment period ends on June 29th and all of those comments should be directed to Tracy Mosman at the Office of Public Instruction. And I have the address there, of course, but you, it's all contained within the notice and you can uh, review the changes that uh, we believe are necessary in order to allow uh, reimbursements for traffic education uh, courses that have not been able to be completed uh, by July 10th uh, because of the COVID restrictions on, um, uh, you know, and the, the restrictions that have been interfering with the ability to have the driving time in particular for students. So we, we think that this amendment takes care of that on a temporary basis and allows these schools to get reimbursement. Uh, so I guess that's it. If you are not on the interested persons list, with the Office of Public Instruction, please contact me or, uh, or Tracy Mosman so you can get on that list. Otherwise, you should be receiving a notice through the Secretary of State's notice process, but I believe as well, we'll be attaching this notice to the um, reflections that you receive from our assistant, Christy, uh, regarding this education advocates meeting. Thanks, Julia. Any questions about that? <clears throat> all right, that was all we had on the agenda. Um, are there any other topics that anyone in the group wants to discuss or any updates from your organizations? I like the teachers at the end. Um, we do have Dylan Huskin, it looks like. I'm not sure if Linda Rost is on, but they're, uh, they're both going to be serving on the Montana Learn Task Force, um, as well as Ann Keith and Anna Baldwin. So we'll have some great teacher leaders on that uh, Montana Learn Task Force to help guide the conversations. Um, we have about 40 people on it, so it's a pretty large committee. We'll use Zoom breakout rooms. Um, and, and we're, yeah, people from all over the state and representing elementary, middle, and high school, and different, um, uh, they teach different subjects, so um, it's great. Uh, anything else for the good of the order? Uh, McCall, are you on by chance? Oh yeah, I was gonna, yep, McCall, 
Yeah, McCall, um, you know, solicited feedback from interested parties on um, the governor's 8.8 .8 million. So um, I don't, I don't know if anyone has any updates on that or wants to talk about that at all. That came about yesterday. Yeah, and Dylan, I just wanted to uh, clarify too. We we only solicited from folks who originally sent in information regarding, you know, asking for funding from the gear fund or um, suggesting on how we should spend those dollars. Um, I think that we're just looking, you know, here kind of at the at the end to kind of see what the greatest need is, especially after some of those CARES dollars have already gone out. So that was the intention of sending the additional letter. Okay, thanks, McCall. Um, before we adjourn, it looks, Pete, you're unmuted. Are you, do you have any updates? Hello? Yep, can we you? can hear you. Okay, yeah, not, not at this time, but thank you. Okay, yep. All right, we'll talk to everyone on Thursday. Thanks.